Αγαπητοί φίλοι και φίλε, καλησπέρα. Καλώ ορίσατε στο φακό του Hellenic TV. Σήμερα φιλοξενούμε τον uh, artist uh, Hamid Ukot. Please correct me, Hamid. Did I pronounce it? Yeah, Uch? Uchok. Uchok. I do apologize. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Hamid Uchok is a Cypriot artist currently living and working in London. He earned his uh, master's uh, degree in painting from the Re Royal College of Art and a BA degree in fine art from the University of Hertfordshire. Good afternoon, uh, Hamid. It's really, really nice uh, to have you with us uh, today. And the reason I invited you is because of your participation on this lovely, great exhibition, There is an Island, who is uh, taking place at the Cyprus High Commission in London. But before we talk about the pieces that they are participating in the exhibition. I would like to find out a bit more about you, if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's completely fine. Um, so yes, uh, my name is Hamid Uchok. Um, I was born and raised in Cyprus. I finished my secondary and high school in Cyprus. Then I came back to the UK for my uni um, degree, like you mentioned, and then I I spent, um, I had a gap year where I had the opportunity to do some teaching for um, the teenagers and uh, kids. I still teach actually privately. Um, so um, besides that, um, I'm a full-time artist. I, I paint for a living. Uh, so I do this professionally and I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so, uh, Hamid, what initially sparked your interest in art and what were some of your earliest inspirations or if you, influences, if you like, that led you to pursue a career uh, as an artist? I mean, as far back as I can remember, I was always involved in some sort of creative activity, uh, whether it was painting, drawing, or watching cartoons, or building structures from Lego pieces, um, my my dad had a um, design design company, and uh, he had um, he, he he's a civil engineer, but he also had uh, lots of architects around him. And I used to go to his office and sort of get very inspired by the um, the you know all the, the 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 creative things that were happening around me and. I remember him seeing me draw a house on the paint program on his laptop when I was very little. And um, he was very impressed because it was completely right in terms of perspective. So and similarly, my primary teacher as well, she was sort of telling my parents, oh, he's he has some sort of he, he's skilled in this area and you should sort of support him. And because my dad was sort of well known in in this area or in this field he took me to an artist uh called Gunnar Pir an artist originally from Paphos uh but he resides in um uh, uh, in in Balabais in the north region um now um he um, and I became his apprentice at the age of eight and um I learned everything from wow. him until I completed my GCACs and my A levels um at the American Academy so I think I was born for this. I did this my entire life. I, I haven't done, I'm not good with other things. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, <laughs> hearing uh, your story, I, I, I will agree with you 100%. So among the various international exhibitions, you have participated because you have participated in many. Can you recall a specific one where you actually felt you are connected you're blended in i mean your work with the rest of the pieces i mean you might think that i'm just saying this because we're here for the high commission exhibition but it is actually the high commission exhibition um i exhibited in many places including the sachi cromwell place um the royal college of art um in many prestigious places but um i always sort of felt like an outsider in terms of my themes because mm. although was dealing with something quite specific which was related mm -hmm. to Cyprus I always thought that the, the the paintings had a global influence because of the other global issues and similar things that were occurring and still occurring in the world actually um and when Anastasia Mina and Michael Martins the curators of the show um 
they're a brand now that the, the peace team as i say um when they approached me to include me in this in the show i was very very excited because i i this was the place that the work needed to be exhibited because i think um and it seems like it worked because we're here talking about them now so um i'm very excited for this i i felt like i was sort of the the space was my island at the high commission and the, the works communicated with you know diversity of the pieces and all of that so i think there is an island is the one i'm going to go yeah i have to say hamid that i felt your passion about this exhibition with our first communication because you were so prompt you know so excited i could actually feel it through the internet which i thought oh yes this guy is a real artist very committed you know so you. well done to you i'm so pleased which makes my life so much easier really you know so <laughs> I was very happy. <laughs> now, can you tell us about your personal experiences and background growing up in Cyprus and actually with both parents who are victims of war? Would you say that they have influenced your artwork? This is going to sound strange, and I'm also looking at my notes here because mm. I don't want to. Um, I, I want to sort of reflect on many things, and I don't want to forget things. Um, it's going to sound very strange, but I actually became more aware of things when I came to the UK. Um, because I was born, like born in Cyprus, I, my dad was always very optimistic in terms of unification. And he sent me to study at the American Academy. And, and before that, at, at, a, at a school called Highgate, which closed down now, I think, an English speaking school. Um, so I can develop my, you know, my skills uh, so I can start speaking Greek and have Greek friends and all of that, which was very nice of him and very visionary, um, I think. Um, so, but for me, I, I was always traveling from Kyrenia, Gerenia, as you, as you guys say, every day, changing two buses, passing through the buffer zone, going to school with friends and I was completely oblivious about everything. For me, everything was normal. And, and I'm putting that in little quota quotation marks. And um, I came to the UK and I was like, you know, things that seemed normal are not that normal. I mean, if you think about it, you, said, like, you know, because life here is completely different. Um, and um, imagine saying good morning to the United Nations soldiers. Imagine walking past the Churchill Hotel every day imagine um you know speaking and and i'm not going to use the word take a separate but speaking in a different language on the other side of the, the the barricade and then sort of switching to english halfway through and then switching to greek right after so things that seem normal weren't normal at all and um and then sort of and and the art education if it's a good one that you get it sort of helps you to sort of question yourself and sort of get more involved in uh, self-expression and self-exploration mm -hmm. and I think through that I started looking more at my family listening to them researching about their experiences their war experiences their life experiences and then you know like my mother she escaped from the Islamic State uh, when the war between Iran and Iraq happened and um, she came to Cyprus literally like a refugee at the at the age of 12 and she couldn't speak any Turkish or Greek or English uh, my dad was born in 64 and then he experienced the second war in 74. Again, my granddad was in the army for 11 years. My grandma was with three kids all over the place, trying to make a living from tailoring and all of that. And having all of this burden on your back, I mean, how can you go and paint trees? Yes, exactly. No, I mean, it's so... Uh, how can I listen to this? Uh, you know, sometimes you you don't realize mm. uh, how people, I mean, how can I say, the, the difficulties that people are going through because, as you said, if you are living in another country, it, it's completely different. But when you come to reality and you realize, oh, you know what, some people are suffering I mean, because especially your mom you know i cannot even uh, imagine you know what 
you know, she went through and she was very brave, you know, to escape, as you said. But a positive thing, just to uh, <laughs> make it more cheerful, is that you definitely speak three languages. Maybe you speak more as well, because earlier on, you did say that you also understand Greek, but uh, I think you are not comfortable, maybe you're shy to speak in Greek, because if you can understand, I'm sure you can speak a little bit as well. My, my friends, um, they all sp spoke Greek around me and Greek was a compulsory subject um, um, course at, uh, at the high school. So I'm quite, I can understand when people speak. My granddad knew perfect Greek um, as well. Um, so I can understand. I can sort of say a few things. Like I'm really good at speaking about food and all that, like any oh. <laughs> Um So I would definitely not starve anywhere when, when there is, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also quite all right with French, I would say. Um, but in terms of, like, speaking fluently, I think possibly... Turkish and uh, English are my uh, main languages, but yes. I'm not there with Persian, unfortunately. My mom can speak Farsi, but I can't French. Uh, I can't speak. Um, so yeah, so I'm sort of yeah, I'm not so bad with languages. Yes, no, you are doing very well. Now, your work often, you know, uh, reflects on the aftermath of war. How do you approach such a, a sensitive and I would say often painful subject in your art? Um, I think I approach it like an artist. Mm. I think that's my answer. Um, I try to be empathetic. I try to be subjective. Mm. Um, I, I do my research and my reading as well. And when I, and I often, when I decide on a subject matter or an image or anything to paint, I would sit with it for a while. I will sit with it. And by that, I mean, like, I will wait. I would either paint it and leave it, or I would just collect my research material and leave it aside and have some time and digest it. So, and when I feel like it's ready, I just trust the timing of the work. And then I will present it. Like many people say that I don't post a lot of paintings. It's not because I don't want to post. It's just, um, it's the process. I work on multiple paintings at the same time. And when the work sort of gets old, as, as, as I say, then I know when, when it's ready to put it out. And by old, I don't mean waiting 10 years, but as in like sort of, it's like cooking, as I say. You, you cook the steak, then you need to leave it to rest for a while before you eat it. Um, so I don't know if that made any sense to you. Um, so, um, no, so some, yeah. I, yes, yes. No, you're right. Some dishes you have and, to, and, yes. And being subjective is a very important word here because I, I'm not trying to tell stories or the stories of my grandparents or my stories or anything about Cyprus historically, politically, anything. I'm not saying it from one point of view. I'm just putting it out there and I'm just telling people that there's a problem here um, and we have to discuss it. Wow. And, um, and there is no one grand uh, narrative. So they function in a very postmodern way, which as in like, there's a lot of layers of meaning and complexities like the separate problem yeah. and, they're, and they're allegorical. And, and the word allegory is basically when sort of, when you reach a story, you, you don't reach a conclusion, but that story sort of leads to different stories and things carry on and you find yourself in this um, zone of metamorphosis, uh, mm -hmm. the you know uh, metaphysical side of things. And here, basically, the meaning you want to desire is the meaning you will receive. Um, so I'm not, because this is very important because I make art, that's my job. I'm not making propaganda, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, my, and I I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to um, make anyone feel sad or anything. And um, and I often ask the, ask my Greek friends around me and my Turkish friends uh, when, what do you think about this? What is this saying to you? Do you think this is offensive? Do you think this is what, what does it tell to you? Because it's important for me as an artist to know. 
Um, and yeah, and this is sort of my, I guess this is the process to approaching sensitive topics and, um, and yeah, I, I think also studying at the American Academy, I was, um, it enabled me to see and hear everyone's opinion and, uh, and hear, hear what everyone thinks. And sort of, I think that's, that, that was really good for me. So I can just put things on scale before sort of paying yeah. Yes. And, um, and you know, I read in your biography as well that you like to leave um, the interpretation, the meaning to the uh, viewer's imagination, which I think mm -hmm. is really good because everyone perceives things different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like it was so funny when we were trying to, I was trying to explain to you something, I can't remember what about the specific painting, one of yours. And I thought, okay, how can I say which one do I mean? And I gave a description that probably it's nothing to do with what you draw. It's what I saw at that moment when I was looking at the picture, you know. So this is very interesting to you, I think, as well. I mean, what others seeing in your paintings? I think painting is 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 digesting. It's it's a constant problem solving, and it's absolutely necessary, especially in the time that we live in, because the media is polluted with so much un, um, 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 so much wrong information. And there's so much data everywhere to the point that no one knows what's right or wrong. Exactly. And I think painting. And I think painting with its material quality, its relation to history and time, it slows down our perception. And when you see a work of art, you just don't look at a painting the, the same way you would look at an Instagram image or a Facebook image. Um, because it's, it's a physical thing. Mm -hmm. um, someone sat there spending hours and hours, maybe weeks, maybe months, thinking about every single symbol, every single brush mark before it sort of gets applied on the surface, the story, everything. Um, and I, I, I paint from um, everything. I paint from life. I paint from images. I paint from, uh, uh, you know, the oral histories that I hear from my parents and my family members. Um, but I'm, I don't document. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to document things. I, I think I regret and I paint what I don't want to see. That, that's my answer, I think. Yes. Now, we have to say a few things about the pieces that are participating in the exhib exhibition. There is an island, and um, I think the opening is on the 6th of June. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the, for mm -hmm. how long the exhibition will last? Is it till the end of August? Um, the exhibition okay. started, I believe, and I hope I'm not saying this wrong, but I think it was beginning of February, and it's going right. to last. It's going to last until the end of August, um, I think. And the PV is taking um, place on the sixth of June because, and many people asked this, why it was delayed or why is it late? And it's due to the Design Biennale, so it's aligned with the timing of the Design Biennale. So that's why it's taking place on the sixth of June. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. And this is going to be at the Cyprus High Commission in London. That's where we can see your paintings, uh, you know. So how uh, can you share with us the inspiration behind your work featured in the exhibition, which they are lovely pieces? You know, do you want to talk to us about three pieces, I think, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, three pieces. Uh, would you like me, is there anyone that you want me to start with? Because they're a little bit different in terms of context. Um, is, is it the, the post-colonial breeze? Yes. I think it's the lady with the veil. And oh, is this the one, just to make sure? Yeah. Yes. What, what so, I was really impressed about it, that you can still see through the eyes and there is so much pain. I mean, that's what I'm saying, you know. So carry on with the rest. <laughs> the the post-colonial breeze was, uh, I planned that painting actually a long time ago. And um, and it wasn't tailored for the exhibition at the High Commission. So I didn't paint that for the High Commission. Okay. 
uh, you might think that it was for the theme, but it actually I was just carrying on with, with my practice as usual. And it's it's a very interesting piece in piece in terms of composition and structure because um, well I paint my grandparents a lot because of their stories and uh, and um, we don't have enough time to talk about everything. But my granddad was um, was living in the same village with um, with his friend who was who was Greek and. Um, after the war, they ended up in different parts of the island. Uh, they went to the army, of course. And one of them passed away in Limassol in a Turkish property. And my granddad passed away in a um, Greek property in the north side of the island. So I, so this sort of I, this idea of eternal house uh, concept and theme came into my mind. Uh, and I started painting their houses and, and the objects and things around them, things that don't belong to them. Um, and I was experimenting with my grandmother and it's really interesting because, um, my grandmother resides in Vasilia, um, and right next to her um, house, there is this demolished hotel, a Greek hotel left from war. And it used to be a very famous tourist destination at the time. And I was just sort of, my, my paintings are like a theater stage. So I was sort of playing around with the concept, moving my grandmother around um, and just playing with the objects and all of that. And in that specific scene, something very unique happened uh, even before I painted it. It's because the color white represents peace. And interesting enough, when I covered uh, her, her head all the way down to her, uh, you know, her arms, um, her belly area. Um, so um, something really weird happened because what represented peace became a terrifying thing and she almost became quite scary um, uh, and almost ghost-like. And I think it really spoke on a def different metaphoric level because um, Turkish people, Turkish Cypriots are, are ghosts on the island. We are, we are from a self-declared state although I don't approve it, um, and we are not seeing, we're not visible. Um, and interesting enough, uh, it also sort of, and in both sides, and we in both the Greek community and the Turkish community, we're very connected with, with other elderly grandparents. And, and you know, we say, yeah, yeah, and papu and all that. And so it's like, it's, we're very sort of connected with them. And she wasn't cute anymore. She wasn't warm anymore. So I think as the younger generation, it was it was some sort of reconciliation happening at that moment where she was in this Greek hotel and, and, and when something symbolically rep that represented peace covered her head, she turned into a ghost. She turned into a Muslim woman that doesn't exist. And, and I think the title is very interesting because everything that happened post-colonial after the British occupation, I think it's really interesting to see the state of things because... In that image, you can find elements of a Turkish Cypriot and a Greek Cypriot at the same time, and they clash. And there is um, something very dark happening. In in Latin, we call it la facia hippocratica, mm -hmm. uh, something that emerges from the ruin of history. Um, and yeah, and, and that was my inspiration and influence for that piece. And interesting enough, again, the work was about Cyprus, but when I finished that work, um, it was also the time when the war, both in Ukraine and um, the war in Israel and Palestine were sort of heating up as well. I think it also spoke on a different level besides Cyprus when I first painted that painting. Right, and then it's there we have about six minutes, uh, the divided uh, heritage. Yeah, the, the divided heritage. Um, the divided heritage was part of an experimental series that I started a while ago. Um, so just to simplify things for people, um, so the stone represents a land and, and, and barbed the wire is basically human made. Um, so I was basically trying to question the fact that we are the same society, the same people. And the only thing that was changing was the objects and the, the symbols, the belief systems, the language, that the, the, the things that humans have created and put around uh, ourselves, our bodies, our faces either to cover it could be um, some sort of like a um a hat it could be a, some sort of like a you know a veil anything um and that one was like a surreal experiment where it spoke about um you know you know the grandparents will go all the old people that sort of 
lived through these experiences will go. And I think what they're going to leave to us as the younger generation is barbed wire and stone. Excellent. Well done. And finally, the heritage. Yeah, it's your uh, the heritage the heritage is also a different one with, uh, with another sort of object um yes. some something sort of like a religious garment around a stone uh, i left that one actually unfinished on purpose i didn't want to paint the whole thing because i liked it halfway through because people can't really say what's going on in there actually these stones are 10 in total um they're part of a very big series um but we decided to go with the heritage number three and five for the exhibition okay uh, so there's 10 of those uh, in my studio. <laughs> right. And finally, uh, Hamid, can we find you in social media? I think you did mention like Instagram where we can see a few of your paintings. Uh, yeah, oh, that, that, that would be amazing. So my Instagram handle is Hamid um, Ujok. So in, always in English. So it's H-A-M-I-T-U-C-O-K. And... Yeah, and you should be able to find it. Excellent. Me. Excellent. We're looking forward to attend the exhibition. And whoever is much. interested, it will be great to attend the opening, which is uh, um, on the 6th of June at Cyprus High Commission. It was really a great pleasure talking with you, Hamid. And I Thank wish you, you all the Thank best. You. And do keep us posted about so any new exhibitions or your work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Αγαπητοί φίλοι και φίλες, εμείς θα τα πούμε και πάλι πολύ σύντομα με ένα καινούριο φιλοξενούμενο. Καλό σας βράδυ.